Hello, my name is Mabel. In the last few videos, we have talked about how to become successful doing Amazon business. And actually, I found many people are interested in this topic. And today, we are bringing another speaker, and his name is Kamar, and he is the founder of AMC One Step. Let's welcome Kamar. Hi, thanks, Mabel. Thanks for having me. I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. Thank you. So, yeah, so in this, you know, uh, webinar, uh, we'll, we will be talking about Amazon listing images. Oh, that's interesting. Perfect. So, so I'm, we're just going to, you know, get started right away and uh, I'll share my screen. Let me know when you see it, Mabel. Okay. Yep, I see it now. I think images are the first impression of like anybody who sees uh, your website or your photos and your product photos, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that is, you know, very, very important. So whenever, you know, you're looking to launch something, images, they are the most important thing because that is something which are going to convert better for your, uh, you know, for your listing. So, so in this, you know, uh, webinar, we'll be talking about uh, listing images that converts really, really well. And, uh, you know, just to introduce myself, my name is uh, Kamal and I'm the founder of AMZ One Step. Uh, we help Amazon sellers with, uh, you know, listing images, listing optimization, and A plus content. But for this part of the video, we'll be sticking to listing images only. And by the end of, uh, by the end of this webinar, you guys will be uh, understanding the importance of listing images. Uh, some of the don'ts that you should not be doing when it comes to the listing images. And we'll also talk about some of the best practices, things that you must do when it comes to the listing images. And we'll also talk about how to create a stunning main image because main image is really important and that's gonna get you more clicks and more clicks means you know more traffic and that's gonna, and that basically means more sales. And we'll also talk about stock images versus real life photography. Uh, this is something uh, not a lot of sellers are aware of. And by the end of this video, you guys will understand the difference and you guys will also be able to make the decision what works best for you. And we'll also talk about uh, lifestyle images and infographics. And again, Mabo, you know, if you have any question, you know, you can always uh, uh, interrupt me and, uh, you know, I'll be very happy to answer that, okay? Sure. Perfect. So yeah, let's get right. Um, let's get started. And the first thing, why listing images are so important. Number one, you know, reason why I talk about listing images is because it increases your click through rate. And that comes with the main image. If your main image looks attractive, and you know, if you have captured it from a unique angle, it can give you more clicks. And that way you can rank higher and also get more sales. So absolutely very crucial to have attractive main image. And second thing, it's gonna give you more conversion because your buyers or you know the people who are viewing your listing, now they can get engaged with your listing images and they can find all the answers they need through the listing images and that ends up having more conversion rate. In Amazon's world, we call it unit session percentage. If you have better unit session percentage, it's gonna rank higher as well. So Amazon prefers listings which have better unit session percentage. In other words, we call it conversion rate. And the other thing that not a lot of people talk about that listing images can also help in reducing the risks of returns and refunds. Why I'm saying this is because if let's say there are many negative reviews you, you see on a lot of the listings that people complain about, hey, this product didn't fit, the size is too small, or maybe this is too large, or uh, this is not safe for something. If you have sizing chart or dimensions chart in your listing images, you can avoid these returns and refunds. Okay, so this is tied up directly to more profit. All right. So next thing why listing images are so important is because it gives a branding element to your brand. If you have a listing which are nicely branded and you're following a nice color theme and you're telling a story through the listing images, it tells that this product belongs to a brand. Even though if you have one product or if you have like 
you know, hundreds of products, it's very important to have that branding element in your listing images so that people know that this product is a branded product and they can trust more uh, on your product. And the next thing, uh, the listing images, they can connect directly with the buyers who are uh, just stumble upon your listing and they're not sure if they should buy or not. You can connect with them immediately through the lifestyle uh, and infographics. And it can also capture the uh, attention of those impatient buyers. Uh, humans are visual creatures and our attention span is going down you know, every single day. So it's very important to capture the attention of those impatient buyers who are just trying to, you know, uh, who are just trying to uh, figure out uh, what products is better for them. So listing images can engage with them. And last but not the least, it's very important. Let's say you have a competitor who is selling something at the same price. And now you can sell it at a higher price because your listing looks much better and people can trust on your listing a lot more. So you can potentially sell at higher price, which means more profit in your pocket. So, and we'll talk about uh, some of the don'ts, some of the things that you should not be doing when creating to the listing, creating listing images. Uh, the first thing, do not use your competitor's listing uh, images or do not use images that your suppliers give you. Because uh, the reason why I'm saying this, because it can attract a lot of hijackers and your listing can be hijacked uh, because you're using the same images and it does not make you stand out. So try not to do it, invest in your images and do not use competitors or suppliers images, create your own. And other thing, do not upload listings which look Photoshopped. Make sure they are blended in nicely, make sure the images look real because the images which look photoshopped they are very unprofessional and it's a big turn off for the buyers and it make them you know it, it make them feel that this product is not legit so do not make sure or do not make sure your listings do not look photoshopped other thing do not violate any terms of service that amazon has amazon has lots of them your main image should be white background only you know i see a lot of people, they're doing some fancy stuff, adding logos, text, or badges in the main image to grab more clicks. But end of the day, it's not a long-term game. I would, uh, you know, we'll also cover in the next slide how to, you know, create a great main image within the terms of service. So do not violate any uh, terms of service of Amazon. And do not repeat the same images over and over again. Uh, uh, you know, you will see a lot of listings where the same angle is being used. It doesn't help. Amazon has a limited space on the listing images. They allow up to nine images that we can have. Uh, I would recommend seven is also fine, but do not waste any image with the same, same angle or same image. And also do not make any false statement which mi misrepresents your product. So these are some of the don'ts that you should not be doing. And let's talk about some of the best practices that you should be doing and that can really help in the sales plus also avoid a lot of frustration. First thing, you might come across when you're looking to launch your product, I see a lot of sellers, they come up to us, they're like, okay, I'm launching my product next week or I'm launching my product in the next three days and I need listing images. No, that's not a good thing to have. You always give yourself at least two to three weeks of time so that you can create some good looking images because images are very subjective. They're not gonna come perfectly fine in the first go. You might need to ask for some changes and stuff like that. So give yourself enough time, have the images prepared while your product is being uh, is in the production. Once you have confirmed that your sample looks good, you can immediately start with the images and your listing so that you don't run, of run out of time uh, when it comes to the launch. Same thing, the quarter four is coming up, you know, people, uh, you know, the launch dates are very, very important. And if your images are not ready or if your images does not look good, your launch gets delayed. So give yourself enough time, all right? And next thing you can do when, maybe do you have so, any questions? Um, if anyone who is interested um, of having you to um, do some image for them, so what do they do? Do they send you the products or how do you do that? So there's two options, either uh, you can send us the product, we're located in Edmonton, Canada, and we take the photos and we make them look uh, really nice. Or if you are, if you know, let's say if you're not able to ship for some reason, 
get some high quality images from your camera and just send the images to us and we'll do the job. And if we need more angles, we know we, we can always ask for it. But yeah, so uh, it's really mainly what people do, they send samples directly to us from from China, you know, from the suppliers. And suppliers are pretty, you know, helpful. They can ship out samples to the photographer. They can ship out the samples to you. So, uh, so yeah, either way works, but we prefer having products in our studio. So that way we know how to take uh, uh, good angles and good photos. We have all the professional equipments. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. And the next thing, you know, uh, what uh, you can do is always interview your agency or freelancer, whoever you're going to hire, whether it's us or someone else, interview them, make sure that they have done work on Amazon listing images beforehand so that you don't waste your money to someone who doesn't know what he's doing and how you can asking some basic questions. Hey, what are some uh, requirements for Amazon listing images? If they know it, that means, you know, uh, they are, they are good people to work with or ask them uh, how much do you charge for variations? So they must know all the Amazon abbreviations and they, if they do know, that means, you know, they have experience with Amazon and do not forget to ask for their portfolio see what kind of images they have created in the past and if that is something you would like to have in your listing. So other best practice that you can do is split test your main image. Uh, do not just restrict yourself to one Im main image. When you upload that to Amazon or any other platform, uh, you can always do split testing. There are some tools out there like PicFu that you can use. Uh, or you can use it like month by month, one month for first main image, second month for the second main image, see what's bringing you more results. And you can, uh, yeah, so that's really important. And other thing you can do is use infographics and lifestyle images. And um, one thing I would like to add is always budget your listing images when you're coming to the launch. Most of the sellers, they budget their in inventory cost, they budget their shipping cost, they budget their marketing cost, but they forget to add you know listing optimization and images cost so always plan that ahead of time and as i mentioned before uh, all whenever you're creating a listing images make sure you have you're following a branding theme all right so now let's talk about main image how do you create a stunning main image while staying in the amazon's terms of service so first thing, if you look at the example here, we have covered um, the corner to corner. There's no additional white space we have left. So why, uh, why I'm saying this, because when people are searching for any keyword on Amazon or even on the phone app, your product looks much bigger than your competitors because you have not left any extra white space and chances of you getting the more clicks is much higher because your product looks more appealing and it looks bigger. And also to stand out from the competitors, make sure you're using a high quality camera so that your product looks crisp, clear, and it's a very sharp image so that people can see what they're going to click on. You'll, you'll come up with lot, lots of listing images where you can't even tell what the product is through the main image. So your main image must be able to tell what exactly the product is in high quality. And the other thing that you can do to make your main image stand out is try to become creative, come up with a unique angle, which no one else is doing. So this comes with the experience, maybe try one or two different angles or maybe three, see what is working out best. And as I mentioned, if you do the split test, you will know what angle is getting you more traffic. All right, and the things which you need to avoid is try not to use any icons, badges, or any text or logos uh, because that is against Amazon terms of service and that can get your listing suspended. So these are some of the things. Nothing on the image. Yeah, on the image. only a clean um, image. Exactly, on the perfectly white background and the image should have the product only. In the main image, you can do some kind of stuff in the, other images, but main image has to be, uh, you know, Amazon compliant. Okay, perfect. So now let's talk about, uh, so this is the main image. And the other thing that not a lot of people are aware of, the difference between the stock images and the real life photography, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of sellers who come to us and they ask, 
hey, should I hire models for this product or should I not? It really depends. A lot of the time you can get away with the real life photography. You can hire, you can get the stock images from, there are some websites like adobestock.com, shutterstock.com, and we can Photoshop the product uh, on the stock image. And these are licensed images. If you look at the image on the left with the baby, it's a stock image, but it nowhere looks Photoshopped and looks perfectly fine to me. On the right side, it's a real model. So you can't really tell the difference if you go with a professional uh, and the images does not look Photoshopped. So, so we'll also talk about uh, the difference between, if some of you uh, don't know what the difference between stock images and real life, uh, I'll just give you uh, the difference between them. And also we'll talk about some of the pros and cons and see what works best for you. So what are the stock images? As I mentioned, stock images are licensed and copyright free images of events, people, places, graphics, or any other things. And stock images can easily be, uh, you can easily get them from adobestock.com or shutterstock.com. If you don't have the account, that's okay. The person you're working with should have access to those uh, websites. And if you're using the stock images, that means we're gonna Photoshop your product on the listing images. And the only thing to keep in mind, we have to make sure that the images look as real as possible. If the images look poor Photoshopped, that means either you are working with the uh, uh, not so good graphic designer or image editor, or the product is too tough, you need to go with the real life photography. And the real life photography, it means you are hiring real people uh, and you're doing it in the uh, you're doing it in the real time. So let's say you have a fitness product, you have uh, athlete come out, use your product, and you then then we take the photos. So this is the difference between stock images and real life photography. And in the next slide, we'll discuss about some of the benefits, uh, pros and cons of each, and then you can make a decision based on that. Okay. And, and what's the cost like? The difference in cost between these two? Okay, we'll, we'll come right Roughly? to, yeah, so, um, yeah, we'll come to that. Uh, it's in the next slide. So let's, so okay. the pros. So we'll talk about the pricing first, okay? So if you're, if you're someone brand new who's just starting out, you can go with the stock images because they are on the cheaper side. You can get it done cheaply. So the budget for the stock images, you're looking at anywhere about, $300 to $400 for seven images. So if you're, look, you know, if you're working with a professional, he's gonna charge you $300 to $400 for seven images uh, if you're going with the stock, if you're going with the stock images. And if you're going with the real life photography, it can cost anywhere between $1,000 to $3,000. It's a big difference. Okay, let me explain you why real life photography is very expensive because Number one, you need to hire models and the models, they, are, uh, use, they usually charge like $40 an hour or $50 an hour. And you know, American laws or Canadian laws, or uh, you minimum have to pay them uh, uh, at least three hours per day. And also it doesn't really take three hours. Sometimes it can take more than three hours. And you also have to pay for the photographer, their travel time and you might need more than one model. You might need a whole family to do the photo shoot, right? In some cases, you also need to rent out a Airbnb or you might need to rent out a gym or something, right? So, so that's why the cost can really go up. It's anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000. The other cost which people don't really, you know, think of that is the props cost. Let's say if you're selling a barbecue mat, now, just to take the barbecue mat photograph, you need to set up a barbecue setup, a clean environment. You need to take some food, you need to be cooking and then using your product and doing the real life photography. So that's why it can be really expensive. On the stock images, you can find stock images of, of barbecue and just Photoshop your product there, right? So that's a big difference. With the real life photography, the other thing I would like to mention, Mebu, that uh, there are a lot of products which are, let's say you have a baby product and babies, they have their own hours. You can't force them to finish a photo shoot. They work on their own time zone, right? And not right. now you have to pay 
one of their parent if their dad is coming along for the photo shoot or if their mom so you have to pay for the two people or maybe if the baby wants to take a nap he wants to take a nap and you gotta bear the cost same thing with the pets you know a lot of people you know uh let's say if it's a pet grooming product right now you have yeah. to do the photography with the pet you can't tell the pet to do certain things or finish on time so do, these are some of the variables that can increase your cost so if so again so uh, if you're someone brand new or if you're lower on the budget go with the stock images if you have a brand or uh, if you want to have a unique identity then you go with the real life photography and the good thing about stock images they are easy to revise uh, let's say you don't like an image i give you an image uh, you're like, hey, hey, I Kamal, this image does not look good. Let's change it. If it's a stock image, I'll be like, yeah, no problem. Let me come up with the second option for you. But with the real life photography, it's going to be very, very challenging because now you need to rehire the models. Now you need to redo the whole shoot and it's not easy to revise. All right. And the stock images can be done very faster. It can, you know, be done in three to four days, even in a week, depending on how busy your um, agency or uh, freelancer is you can get the things done in like four to five days even maximum one week uh, because there's not a lot of things everything is done on computer on the real life photography the turnaround time is much longer because now you need to schedule let's say the gym or you need to book a location you need to make sure the timings are matching with the all the models and there's a lot of weather restriction as well you book everything and now all of a sudden it's raining and you now you can't do the out, outdoor shoot so there's like a lot of variables when it comes to the uh, real life photography and that's why the it can take much longer than you know than the expected time and uh, talking about the pros the real life photography you know it's really good if you have multiple products, now you can have uh, those models become face of your brand and, and you can shoot multiple products at the same time. So it is really cost efficient if you have multiple products, but if you're a big brand, go with the real life photography. And the real life photography also looks very professional because uh, the images look crisp and they don't look photoshopped. And also you're giving, uh, you know, no one else is using those images. With the stock images, anyone can have those stock images, right? With the, your models, no one else can have uh, those images. So these are some of the prawns. And let's talk about uh, cons as well. So stock images, as I mentioned, if you're working with the uh, lower skilled person, images can look photoshopped. As I mentioned, your competitors can also use the same images. And uh, in some cases, let's say your product is brand new and there's not a lot of stock images available then stock images are not the best way to go you have to go with the real life photography and some of the cons of uh, real life photography as i mentioned it could be expensive longer turnaround time and they are not that easy to revise as i mentioned there are many variables with the real life photography so so these are some of the things that you want to consider and now you can make your decision based on that whether you should be doing stock images or you should be doing uh, real life photography all right. So these are some of, uh, you know, hope this helps. And uh, before I move on to infographics and lifestyle images, any questions, Mibudi, or are we good? Yeah, we are good. Okay, perfect. So now let's talk about a little bit about uh, infographics and lifestyle images. So what are lifestyle images? Basically uh, having people in the images, making the emotional uh, connection with the buyers, uh, or it could be uh, any image of product in action. So that's called lifestyle image. And infographics is basically the images which have text on them. And what is Im important in infographics and lifestyle images? Uh, what you can do is make sure you're showing all the dimensions or sizing of your product and you're highlighting all the features and some of the benefits of your product and some decision making points which your buyers can you know connect with that immediately and they can make decision based on that for example let's say your product is for the babies and it's not the babies who are going to buy this product it's going to be their mom or dad 
So what are some of their common questions which can trigger them make the product? Let's say uh, a mom is buying, buying a product for their kid, maybe safety. Is it safe for, for my kid? So it's good to have a safety lifestyle image or safety uh, safe for your kids in the infographics so that you can connect with that mom and she can make that decision, right? So, so these are some of the things which are really important in uh, infographics and lifestyle images. But how do you do the research and where do you do the research and how to uh, create lifestyle and infographics images? Number one, your graphic designer or your uh, image editor should be able to, should be qualified enough to figure this out, but most of them, they're not. So it, it's always a good idea to, to have, you have the knowledge that what is going behind the scenes. So how do you get some ideas to create infographics and lifestyle images. First thing I would recommend is going out to your competitors and uh, reading their positive and negative reviews. See what are some of the things people are really loving. And you can talk about that because that's gonna tell you in the real time who is buying the product and what is the best part of this product and that people are loving. So that can come in your lifestyle or in infographics image. Same thing, look what are people complaining about. If they're complaining about the size, if, if they're complaining about the material or, or quality or what is the pain point, get that information from neg negative reviews and use that in your images so that people can trust more because every buyer is reading the reviews, especially the negative reviews. So buyers are reading negative reviews and you are covering all those in your listing images. What does that mean? It's a bingo. People are going to trust your product and they're going to buy that immediately. So that's where you get some ideas. You can also get ideas from the questions answered. On Amazon, there's like lots of listings which have like 100 questions asked or 100 questions answered. You can go to their questions, some of your main competitors and see uh, what are the common questions people have. Don't let them ask the question, have those questions answered in the listing images. Also talk about some of the unique selling point that your product has. Not, pro not every product is exactly same. When you're working with your supplier, you know, get some things modified that make you stand out and talk about that why your product is better than others. So you can also talk about that in your listing images. And other thing, when you're creating the lifestyle image, figure out who's your target audience. Who are you talking to? Is it female between 25 to 35? Or is it a male between 40 and 50? Is it for kids? Is it for teenager? How That's how you will get an idea that what people you need in the lifestyle, what's their lifestyle? Are they athletes? Do they go to gym every day? Or are they office people? Or are they like, you know, housewives? It could be anything figure out your target audience and create your listing images based on that so that you're connecting with them emotionally through the listing images. And you also need to have your product knowledge, see what's the best and what's not so good. So you can discuss with your uh, image editor or graphic designer uh, and that way you can come up with some really nice designs for your Amazon listing images. And the other thing that I uh, forgot to mention that's not in the slides. If your brand is registered, there's a brand analytics tool that you can use. And that way you can see what are some of the top listings which are converting really well. Uh, you can see who's getting the most click share and who's getting the most conversion share. So you can see their images and try to come up with the something similar formula, but obviously better. So that's gonna give you an upper hand because now your listing is even better than what's converting really well. So these are some of the things uh, when, when it comes to the listing images. Uh, so I hope I have covered everything. You know, if I have missed anything or if you still have any questions, you can always comment on this video and I'll you know keep check, checking it back and I'll reply there. Or you can always uh, uh, reach us at info at amz1step.com and I'll be very happy to answer any questions that you have in related to the listing images. So that's pretty much it. Uh, in yeah, terms thank of you so much. 
And yeah. also, um, you mentioned the infographic photos. How much information should someone put on one photo? Like, because you also don't want to put on too much yeah. of the test. That that is a really that that's a really good point. So what we like to do is we like to have less text but more valuable. You don't want to fill up your image with too much text so that it you know uh, so your product does not you know it's overshadowing your product. Less but more effective. That's how we go about it. And other thing that you can do with the listing Im uh, infographics is talk more about benefits. Let's say. Um, you know, helps in immune system. That's been enough. You don't have to write the whole science behind it. You say helps. And the other thing uh, in the listing images, you don't want to make any claims. You you only have to use words like helps or 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 improves, so that way you are not violating Amazon's terms of service. So yeah, I would I would say less infographics are the better. But in some images where let's say yeah. What kind of words that you use that would violate the Amazon rules? Okay, so uh, with the main images, as I mentioned, no text, no logo, no badges. Uh, but on the other images, Amazon also have some strict gu uh, guidelines. Recently, Amazon came out that we can't make any claims. For example, we can't say FDA approved now and uh, even the eco-friendly Amazon is not liking that. And some of the claims like helps you lo uh, maybe uh, if you if you say that uh, lose weight, that's a claim. What you can say is, in, instead is helps in weight loss, but you can't say this product will make, you know, make you lose. Like we definitely lose, make you lose weight. Yeah. So you can say helps or, yeah. but you don't want to uh, make any improve. claim. So these are some of the things that you're, uh, that you're going against Amazon terms of service, you can also, you also cannot have your competitor's product just to bash them. That's also uh, Amazon's, uh, that's also against Amazon terms of service. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what did you want to say before I interrupt you? Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I, even I don't, uh, I don't remember now. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. It's, um, very, I'm so glad to have you and the information are so valuable. And if anybody have any questions, um, yeah, you can directly uh, can, um, contact Kamal or you can leave any comments um, in this uh, chat box. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mabu. And it, it was a pleasure talking to you and I hope the audience found some value out of it. Yes. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to start Bye. recording.